Hi everyone, my name is Chris Spaticini. I'm here at the Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory and I'm going to tell you today about a program in additive micromanufacturing and engineered materials. We're working in collaboration with MIT, the University of Illinois, and the University of Wisconsin. We're sponsored internally with laboratory research funds as well as by DARPA Defense Sciences Office. So let's begin by talking a little bit about what additive manufacturing actually means. If you're not familiar with it, it's the process of joining materials to make a highly three-dimensional object in a layer-by-layer -layer fashion. This is fundamentally advantageous compared to conventional manufacturing and machining because you don't need any fixturing or tooling or setup in order to make the part. You go directly from a computer design to a fabricated three-dimensional part. For example, the coffee mug you see here on the screen is actually somewhat difficult to manufacture. There are deep cavities, highly complex geometries, uh, and significant tooling and fixturing in order to make this part. If you were to do this in an additive fashion, you would divide the part up into layers in the vertical direction and build it layer upon layer. You could refine the part by making the layers significantly thinner. You may have heard of additive manufacturing in the news recently. It has been in several major media publications, such as The Economist, shown here, where they described uh, someone who has actually printed uh, a musical instrument as well as some chainmail uh, type armor. Uh, it's been in several other publications as well where folks have talked about printing wings and things as large as, as aircraft wings and cars. Um, and there's also a set of additive manufacturing uh, industry type magazines as well, which you may, have been, may be familiar with. So commercial additive manufacturing tools uh, exist today. You can purchase them. They range anywhere from about thirty dollars or $40,000 up to uh, several million. Uh, we've highlighted some of these most common commercial tools and techniques here on this view graph. On the top, the tools you see there, I won't go into the details, do additive manufacturing of plastic materials. On the bottom, these are the tools that can actually do additive manufacturing of metals and make highly functional, structurally robust components. These are some examples of some of the parts that can be made using these techniques. Again, on the top, plastic parts, and on the bottom, metal. I'd like to call your attention to the two components in the lower center of the chart. First on the left, made with laser engineered net shaping, is an actual turbine blade. And on the right, made with E-beam melting uh, by an RCAM system, is a medical implant that could actually be put into the human body. So these are two uh, very significant applications for commercial additive manufacturing. So what are we doing here at Livermore? We're developing additive micromanufacturing technologies. For example, on the upper left, we have a system called projection microstereolithography. This system uses an optical beam and a set of LEDs through some optics to make highly three-dimensional microstructures very rapidly in a layer-by-layer -layer fashion. To the right of that is a second technique we're developing called direct ink write. In this case, we extrude materials through micro nozzles to make filamentary structures and build up complex microscale and even nanoscale architectures. Below that, on the bottom of the chart, is electrophoretic deposition. This technique is different than the other two in that it uses electric fields to move charged nanoparticles in solution uh, to an electrode surface. In this way, it can build up a three-dimensional component of multiple materials very rapidly. And you can see an image of multiple materials in layered up in this, from this electrophoretic deposition technique. So why are we interested in these techniques? If you comb through the literature, you can find many interesting material geometries that are micro and nano scale, highly three-dimensional and often multi-material. They provide functionality that you could not normally get from any natural material. However, the one thing in common with all of these structures that you see here that you can find in the literature, no one can build them. Because they're so three-dimensional, they're micro scale and multiple, contain multiple materials in a single structure. So these are the things that we've targeted with our additive micromanufacturing tools to be able to make some of these structures and achieve some of these previously unachievable material properties. For example, here are some of the structures that we've actually fabricated. On the upper left, you can see a highly three-dimensional microarchitecture known as an octet truss. This particular uh, unit cell is high stiffness, high strength, but ultra light in weight. Below that is a lattice of a similar structure. You can take this micro-scale unit cell and assemble it into a bulk material, as shown there. On the upper right, you can see similarly complex microarchitectures, and below that, control of actual nanoscale geometry, ranging from amorphous to crystalline packing of spheres. Uh, I'd also like to call your attention to the image in the middle of the screen. This is a highly functional material that was made with our direct ink write system. It is a silver nanoparticle ink, which is highly conductive, printed onto a small hemisphere. This actually is a highly functioning small antenna. 
So this two centimeter antenna resonates at wavelengths upwards of 15 centimeters, making it highly functional and usable in small wireless type devices. So to, to wrap up, the benefits of additive manufacturing are their speed and efficiency, reduced waste streams, and the potential for significantly reduced energy usage. Also manufacturing for function as well as shape. We're using our additive micromanufacturing tools to control micro and nanoscale architecture to achieve materials with unprecedented properties. So where does this type of personalized, customized manufacturing fit into the marketplace? What are the near-term applications? These are the kind of things we'd like to talk to you about today. For more information on these technologies and how to move forward, please contact our Industrial Partnerships Office. Thank you.